Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and we have a fascinating, fascinating teaching on Isaiah 53, unlike you've ever heard before. And, uh, and, and it's largely due to a mistranslation of one particular verse. Uh, and it's not going to change anything about the great redemption story of our Savior, Jesus Christ, but uh, it is. Uh, I, I was blown away. I'm actually studying uh, in the book, uh, The Josephic Messiah, right now because of the AI technology that's spoken about in this book here 200 years ago, the plan for, as they call it, redemption, which is the Antichrist that's coming. Uh, and as a result of some of the studying that I'm doing there, I got inspired uh, over Isaiah 53. Now, before we get into this, uh, one thing I want to share with you, and I have to be very careful in the verbiage. We're going to be in Pensacola, Florida this coming week. My wife is going to be speaking uh, at an event, uh, not, a, not, a, not long, but, but speaking for a little bit there at an event there. Um, and I can't say a whole lot. I'm going to kind of show you some things for you to take a look at here on your screen. Uh, it is a freedom rally. I can say that much. Knowledge is power. And uh, there are some particular names that are going to be there that you guys may be familiar with that will be speaking. Of course, my wife will be speaking there as I think she'll be the first speaker. Uh, she'll be speaking. I know about uh, what it was like under communism because uh, she grew up under communism and the uh, uh, former communistic uh, empire of the uh, Czechoslovakia uh, before the fall of communism. And, uh, and of course, as you can see here on this right here, um, let's see. Yeah, you got, if you look at the bottom there, you'll see the name of some of the other speakers there. There may be as many as three. There may be one other lady that will be speaking as well, but I want you to be able to see that. Now, Tickets are $5 to get in. It's October the 12th. I know the door opens at 6 p.m. It is an outdoor stadium, a baseball stadium there in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, Two-hour meeting there till 8.30 p.m. But supposedly you could go to the Blue Wahoos website and get tickets there. Uh, I was trying to find the event listed. It's not listed as of yet. Only October the 9th and October 14th is listed. You guys may be able to find it. So that, that's supposed to be one place you're supposed to be able to buy your tickets online. I just didn't have a success in finding it there. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, initially that's, um, I think if you type in blue wahoos, um, Dot com. That's the official website, but it takes you to this milb.com Pensacola. And, uh, but I'm just not seeing it in any of the latest things on there, but it's supposed to be there. So maybe they'll have it up here in the next day or so if you're wanting to get your tickets online. But then again, this is Tuesday and we're here at Saturday. And my apology, I was supposed to let you guys know this about two days ago. And I've been so caught up in other things that we're trying to deal with. You can probably just tell by the look at my screen at the top there. I've got gosh knows how many windows open, uh, different things that are going on around the world. It is alarming the things that are taking place. Uh, and that's one reason why the study in some of this book here, Jana is going to be joining me hopefully very soon in a video um, about the AI technology uh, we're also looking at doing a, an interview with a very brilliant man. Um, I won't say who that is as of yet. We're working on the details of that already. They've already accepted the interview request, uh, who really con uh, confirms a lot of what we've already uh, spoke about to you guys. So let me take you back to some of these images just so you can see that. <clears throat> Again, Jan will be speaking there. I'll be there as well. I'll be covering the event. And... Um, we thought about trying to have some type of little private meeting with folks that come up there, uh, but that would probably be the next day. I, I just don't know where I could do it at. That's the problem. Um, you know, we'll check to see. What, I don't know which hotel we'll be in ourselves at this point right now, but we'll see um, if the hotel we're in, if we can get, get, get a hold of a conference room there that might seat, you know, 30, 40 people, something like that. We'll see if we can pull that off as well. 
Uh, I just I just don't know how we can do that. But but nonetheless, we'll get to meet those of you that are able to come. And uh, we hope you come, especially if you live in that area. I think it's very vital, the information that's going to be shared there at that particular meeting there. Uh, all right, let's get let's get seriously into what we're about to uh, look at here. Isaiah 53. Um I'm going to be focusing on verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I have quoted this a million times over this passage here, and it doesn't diminish one iota of the healing power of Jesus Christ. It does not diminish the fact that, uh, that you know, he, he died for us, he was he gave his life so that we could go free. Um, and we're going to go more into the verse here in just a moment. But I, I want it before we do anything, because I realize that what I'm about to share with so many of you, it's, it's going to be earth shattering. And uh, so I really want to make sure that you guys understand our fundamental foundation of faith in Jesus Christ right here. Right. Where the scripture says and we're reading right here, where is this? This is in Luke chapter, I believe, 18, verse 41, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto you? Right? It's the, it's the blind man. He comes, he's, he's, he cries out, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went uh, before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What will you that I should do for you or do unto you? And he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Now, I'm using modern English. I know we see it in uh, the old English there, but remember, we translate these videos into other languages from time to time. So I want to make sure that the translating machine will translate it correctly. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. So what caused that blind man to receive his sight? It was his faith. His faith. In Jesus Christ, not only did he receive his sight, but it also saved him, right? Amazing, without a doubt. Yet another scripture there. Uh, actually, I want to say this one for, I'll do this one after we go into all these other things. Um, this is Paul over in the book of Acts, right? They were, they were where, started as Acts chapter 14, start with verse 6, they were Ware of it and fled into Lystra and Derby, cities of Laconia, and into the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. There sat certain men of Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in a speech of Lyconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Oh my God, what a horrible thing to be said. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter which was before their city brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you do these things? We are also men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which had made heaven and earth the sea and all the things that are therein who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven, fruit, uh, fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and with gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrain, restrain thy, they, they the people that they should not have done sacrifice unto them. And there came uh, there certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium 
who persuaded the people of having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Well, it's horrible. But the point is, really the point, and I, you know, I got to come back to this, by the way, because talk about an alien fallen angel mess. These people believed in the fallen angels. And I never, I, I totally forgot about this scripture. I didn't, wasn't, I hadn't read the whole thing when I put it in there. So we got to come back to this one as well. Anyway, you know, what was it? His faith is what Paul perceived that the man had. That's why he got healed, right? Amazing, right? Let's look at another one here. This one here, this is in Matthew chapter eight. Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Remember it was the, it was the soldier. Uh, if I remember right, let me back up on that. All right. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a sentry and beseeching him, a soldier, saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion asked and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, this man go, and he goes, to another come, and he comes. And to my servant do this, and he do does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Notice what he says. He's not found such a great faith, not in Israel. Being that he's a soldier, more than likely, he's actually a Roman. I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said unto the sentry, and go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it unto you. And his servant was healed the self same hour. Notice what he said. As you have believed. Also it was because of faith. See healing. Salvation is based on our faith. In Jesus Christ. Now like so many others. I've often quoted Isaiah as well. Is being that he was beaten. And I'm healed because of his beatings. But yet, nowhere in Scripture, in the New Testament, do we ever see where Jesus ever implied that when they beat me, you'll get healed. In fact, if anything, the healing was even before what happened to him. So what then may this really be, really say there? And it's, fa it's interesting as well, because in this particular one here, where he says, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. It's going to really be important that you remember this verse and the next verse with it, because it'll make more sense when we read what's over in Isaiah 53. And I say unto you that many shall come from east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why are the children of the kingdom being cast out into outer darkness? Well, now with that, all right, let's change the color of that particular one because I really want you to be able to see that. The children of the kingdom are going to be cast out into outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Something must have went wrong. Let's first take a look at Isaiah 53. And we're going to read this over in the King James Version, right? Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That very first sentence is important. Whoop, back it up, sorry. Who has believed our report? You know, that's the whole problem. They didn't believe. Didn't mean for it to do like that. I messed up, but oh well. Let's see if I can back it up. Nope. I uh, don't know if I can do it that way either. Let's try. That's yeah, all right. So it doesn't matter. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. 
And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So true. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5 is what's important. We're going to just get the King James Version, and then we'll go into it. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He is taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken. I'm going to stop right there at verse 8. And I want to take you to the Hebrew language and I want to look at these verses here. All right. And this is going to shock many of you. Shock many of you. Now, actually, the funny thing is, is verse five is more accurately translated in the Hebrew English version here on Mamre, Mechon Mamre.org's website than it is in the King James Bible, which is unusual. They don't normally always uh, pull off that accuracy. All right. Um, but this time they did. That's King James. But he was wounded. Notice, let me, and this is very important. Let me see if I can pull this off here. Um, for our transgressions. All right. That's, that's how they translate that right there. Let me turn that to green. But I want to really what I want to focus on here with you is, uh, and I'm going to turn that back to yellow for a moment. All right. The word for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. All right, let's do that one too. That way we can kind of separate it. So if you're looking at this later, I want you to really to be able to understand where we're going at with this. Okay, for our iniquities. Let's go back now to the Hebrew language right here. All right. Now, but he was wounded, they put on there, because of our transgression. That's actually more correct. Vehu mechalal mi peshaane aenu. All right. The 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 right there. Let me see. I don't know if I can highlight this. Pro there we go. I got it. Let me put that yellow so you can see the the mem in there with the little dagish underneath the mem there. That that is from the 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 word in Hebrew mene. In the word mene, there is absolutely no way under the heaven you can translate that as for. All right. So when it says, but he was wounded uh, over in the King James, we have for our transgressions. But you have to remember Isaiah 53 is a prophecy of the Messiah and what happens to him. All right. This is what's happening to him. But we've the translators have made a mistake and they've made it look as if our sins and our transgressions is what brings us salvation. No, that's not that's not correct. But rather, in this case here, but he was wounded. And literally, it is true. It would be more accurate to say because of our transgressions. Whose transgressions? Not yours. It was Israel's transgressions. It was the Jewish people of that day, the Pharisees and Sadducees and what more. Those that were condemning him. It was their transgressions that the prophet Isaiah saw that he would be wounded as a result. Who were the ones that actually went and got Jesus and took him up to the high priest? It was the temple guards. 
We know this because of the book of Matthew in the Hebrew language, the very book that's been preserved, the, the Shem Tov Hebrew Matthew, that lets us know it was the temple guards that came out and got Jesus. It wasn't the Roman soldiers that brought him up. So the prophecy says, but he was wounded because of our transgressions. In other words, the prophet saw that his own people, their own transgressions was going to cause his wounding. Medecha, Menutenu, the next part, he was crushed. Again, me, uh, decha, me enutenu, he is crushed because of our iniquities. Israel had become so blinded through the perversion of mingling their race with, with these fallen angels that you had a mixed multitude. The priesthood had overthrown the uh, Aaronic priest. The, the, true, uh, the true priesthood, the Zadokite priest, were down in Qumran. And they were writing about the sons of darkness and the sons of light. They considered themselves the sons of light. And they considered the Pharisees, Sadducees, those that were running the temple in Jerusalem as the sons of darkness. And they specifically write in their own writings that they had mingled their seed and they had perverted it with the peoples of the lands when they were over in uh, Babylon. And as a result, because of that mingling of the seed, they were a hybrid race. And literally, I found in um, uh, one of the documents uh, recently, one of the ancient documents, that the priests, the, excuse me, not the priests, uh, but the Pharisees were actually part of the archons and literally descendants of the fallen angels. That's written in one of these ancient documents. I'll have to find it. I forget exactly where that's written at, but I'll have to find it and share that with you later. Blew me completely away. So we know this, we see this, and so therefore it's because of their transgressions. Now, why does Isaiah say uh, our? He says the word our because they're still half Jewish. Even though they've mingled their seed, they're still half Jewish. And they're persuading all the people to go along with this. Then you wonder, see, how can then we wonder then why when Jesus says, where were, where were we at when we read this? See, um, uh, let me find it again. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's because of their transgressions and their sins. All right, so let's continue on though. It doesn't end with those two there. The next one too. The chastisement of our welfare was upon him. Now, literally, it says, Musa uh, shalom, Shalomnu Aliyav. Shalom being peace. Shalomnu, our, Shalomenu, is how you pronounce that, Shalomenu, our peace. That was a, literally the way to translate it. It's kind of like mixing the words up a little bit. It'd be like, our peace that was upon him was just chastisement. In other words, we express we're a peaceful people. Remember how they would say, and this is fascinating because what did they say? They said to to to, um, um, to the Roman to the Roman uh, uh, at the time that was over over Israel, Pontius Pilate. They said, in our law, we cannot kill him. That was their peace. We can chastise him, but we can't kill him. We, you know, but by our law, he should die is what they said. But in other words, Pilate, you do the dirty work. That's literally what it's saying here. Our peace that we did upon him was to chastise him. So not only did they wound him, 
because of their own sins, but they also crushed him because of their iniquities. And their so-called peace was only chastising him at every moment they got. And then the last sentence right here, and with his stripes, we were healed. You know, that right there is a absolutely stunning sentence. Ubecha buteu teo neofelanu. What is, what is the saying really here? And with his stripes, we were just healed. In other words, he's bearing in his body all of these wounds that has been done to him, but the only thing he ever did for them was to heal them. Then look at verse 6. All we like sheep did go astray and turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath made to light on him the iniquity of us all. It's absolutely amazing. The very last verse, there, there is a book that they had found uh, over in Egypt. Uh, and I think, and I read this long time ago. I just can, I remember it a little partially there, uh, where I believe it's attributed to Mary. And they say that when Christ was on the cross, she ran out into the street and she cried out, what has he done? What did he ever do but heal your sick? That's what the end of the verse is saying. The healing, that's why it's in the past tense too. We were healed. In other words, regardless of what you did to him, he did only but good to you. Your peace, that was the Jews of that day, the Pharisees, Sadducees, etc. The only peace that you had to offer to him was your chastisement. And why did all this happen? Because of their sins. And they crushed him because of their iniquities. The whole verse was the prophecy of what Israel would do to their own Messiah when he comes. That's the cold hard truth of that. It doesn't diminish the fact that Jesus Christ is a healer. It doesn't diminish that he... He died for us and that his salvation and that our salvation comes from the fact that the life that come from him is able to come back upon us by the power of the Holy Spirit that quickens us to life with him. It doesn't diminish any of this whatsoever. But when we truly begin to examine this according to the way it should be translated, it paints a totally different picture. And it shows you who was responsible for his death. It shows you what was offered and what he was offering. This is the cold hard truth about it. Anyway, God bless you. We love you. Um, if you feel ever compelled to want to support the work that we do, if God lays that upon your heart, our website, israelinewslive.org. Uh, you can donate online or via email, uh, excuse me, not email, but via uh, P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. You see that on your screen on the right. and uh, Or you can do it Stephen, Ben Noon, either way, whichever uh, you prefer to do. But we appreciate that. All of our latest videos that are loaded on iConnect are always right here. And uh, you can easily just click on there. You can even click on the year. Um, Let's see, I forget how this done. Yeah, China takes over Taiwan. Uh, I'm still working on some things on that. I mentioned to you, I think in this video right here, I'd already talked about the Philippines being taken by, by China. And then, of course, I got a little update uh, from friends up there in Washington that this confrontation with the Philippines has already begun. So just as a reminder of that. And then don't forget, 
Pensacola, October the 12th. We will be there, uh, and, uh, and it is that particular rally right there. And, uh, and as I mentioned to you at the bottom of the screen here, uh, these two individuals will be speaking there. This, this uh, man here, as well as this other man. Yana, my wife, will be speaking there. And if there's any way possible, maybe the 13th, we might be able to put together something at a hotel that we're staying at. I don't have any of that confirmed as of yet because I don't know if we can get a conference room or not. If I'm able to, though, I will update you by tomorrow on that as well. Uh, but I'll be covering this, this meeting there as well, be filming it. Uh, so at least gives us a chance. If you're able to make it out, we can greet you. But the information of what's going to be shared there is far more valuable than what I can be saying. So uh, definitely make plans to attend. Thank you. God bless you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli.